Hello, in this video we're going to find all right triangles with integer sides. So you are familiar with the Pythagorean triples, which are integers that are sides of a right triangle. Things like 3, 4, 5. So those are three sides of a right triangle. One thing that you could do if you have a triangle, 3, 4, 5 triangle, you can double all sides or triple all sides and then you get another right triangle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to reduce the right triangle to make sure that the sides of the triangle are relatively prime. So a definition, a triple of positive integers a, b, c is called a Pythagorean triple whenever a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This Pythagorean triple is called primitive whenever the GCD is 1. In this video, we are going to find all primitive Pythagorean triples. Any primitive Pythagorean triple is of the form 2mn m squared minus m squared and m squared plus n squared where m greater than n are two relatively prime positive integers and precisely one of m and n is even. Also, Note that the above theorem produces each primitive Pythagorean triple precisely once. So here's an example. If you look at the table, you see if you plug in different values of m and n, so m and n must be relatively prime, and one of them must be odd, one of them must be even. So the smallest one would be m equals 2, n equals 1. And notice that m must be more than n. So that gives us the 4, 3, 5 triangle. 2 times 2 times 1, that gives you 4. 2 squared minus 1 squared, that gives you 3. 2 squared plus 1 squared gives you 5. 3, 2 gives you 12, 5, 13, and so on. And in fact, every Pythagorean triple appears exactly once. If you want to get all Pythagorean triples, what you need to do is you take a primitive Pythagorean triple and then you rescale it by a factor of d. So now we are going to prove the theorem. So the rest of the video would be the proof of this theorem. So let's assume that you have a Pythagorean triple that is primitive. So assume a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared and the GCD of ABC is in fact 1. What I want to show is I want to first show that c must be odd and then use some the property that GCD of ABC is 1 and then get to the conclusion. So let's assume c is even. So first, the first claim is we will show c is odd. Okay, what happens if c is even? So if c is even, then there are two possibilities. Either a and b must both be even, that's not possible, or a and b must both be odd. So then since gcd of abc is 1, a and b must both be odd. Because notice that a squared plus b squared is c squared, c is even, so a and b must either both be odd or both even. They cannot be both even because the GCD is 1, so therefore they must both be odd. Now let's, do, let's see what happens if both are odd. If you have an odd number, if n is odd, then you can write down n as 2k plus 1, and when you square that, you get n squared equals 4k squared plus 4k plus 1, which is 1 mod 4. So that tells us that a squared plus b squared mod 4, a and b are both odd, so a squared is 1 mod 4, b squared is also 1 mod 4, so this would be 2 mod 4. So that tells us c squared must be 2 mod 4, but that's not possible. Because if you square an even number, its a score would be a multiple of 4. Okay, so what we got is that c is odd. If c is odd, that tells us one of a or b must be odd. Thus, precisely one of a or b is odd. So let's assume a is odd and b is even. So assume a is odd and b is even. So what I have now is a is odd, b is even, and c is odd. So what I want to show is now that since GCD of ABC is 1, a and b and c are in fact pairwise relatively prime, which means no pair of them share a common factor. If p 
P divides A and P divides B, then P must divide A squared plus B squared, which is C squared, and that means P must divide C for some prime P. So that tells us that GCD of A and B must be 1. So if A and B cannot have any common factors. Similarly, GCD of A and C and GCD of B and C is also 1. Now, let's write down the equality. We know A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. We are going to move A squared to the other side. So we get B squared is equal to C squared minus A squared. A is odd. B is even. So if we label this, this one's even. This one and this one are both odd. This is odd and this is odd. So we're going to factor the right side. We get B squared equals C minus A, which is even, C plus A. Both C minus A and C plus A are even. We're going to divide both sides by 4 to get rid of the even factor on the right. The interesting thing about the right hand side is that these two numbers are relatively prime in fact. So we're going to show claim is that C minus A over 2 and C plus A over 2 are relatively prime. And let me write down the right, the left hand side as B over 2 squared. Okay, so why are these relatively prime? Because if there is a prime, suppose on the contrary, some prime Q divides C minus A over 2 and also C plus A over 2. So this means Q divides their sum C minus A over 2 plus C plus A over 2, which means Q divides C. Also, Q divides their difference, C plus A over 2 minus C minus A over 2, which means Q divides A. But that's a contradiction. Because we showed that C and A are relatively prime. So back to the equation that we had. If we write it down, we have B over 2 squared equals C minus A over 2 times C plus A over 2 and we know these two numbers, C minus A over 2 and C plus A over 2, do not share a common factor. If you look at the prime factorization of B over 2 squared, all of the exponents are even. Every prime power either appears in C minus A over 2 or in C plus A over 2, which means C minus A over 2, when you look at its packed factorization, all of the exponents are even. Thus, C minus A over 2 equals M squared and C plus A over 2 equals N squared for some relatively prime, relatively prime integers M and N. And in fact, if we want to match what we are going to get at the end, we should swap these two because M was larger in the problem that we were given. Okay, so these are in fact relatively prime integers and we have C minus A over 2 is equal to one of them squared, C plus A over 2 is equal to the other one squared. Now if you look at B over 2 squared, that is N squared times M squared. And there are of course positive integers. Let me write it down. Okay, integers M and N. So if we take this one and take the square root we get b is equal to 2mn. Now, if you write down c, if you evaluate c by the, taking the sum of these two, you get m squared plus n squared, and the difference of them gives you m squared minus n squared, which is what we wanted. The only thing that is left to prove is that m and n are in fact, one of them is even, one of them is odd. So since c is odd, we showed that c must be odd, uh, precisely one of M or N 
is odd. So what we showed is that in fact every Pythagorean triple would be of the form 2mn m squared minus n squared and m squared plus n squared with these conditions that m and n are relatively prime gcd of m and n is 1 and precisely one of them is odd which means 2 does not divide m plus n that's another way of saying precisely one of them is odd now one thing to notice is that in fact these three numbers are Pythagorean triples because if you take 2 m n squared plus m squared minus n squared squared you end up getting 4 m squared n squared plus m to the fourth n to the fourth minus 2 m squared n squared which is in fact m to the fourth plus n to the fourth plus 2 m squared n squared which is m squared plus n squared squared so these three numbers do form a Pythagorean triple also they do not share a common factor so if you take the GCD of let's take the GCD of 2mn and m squared minus n squared they do not have a common factor this is one and here is why um, first of all since precisely one of m and n is odd 2 doesn't divide m minus n 2 also doesn't divide m plus n and the other thing is that since m and n so this is since precisely one of m or n is odd now if you take the gcd of m and n we know these two are one so that means gcd of m and m minus n and gcd of m and m plus n is also one if m and n do not have a common factor, m and m minus n also do not have any common factor. Because the difference of these two would give you n. So, and then finally, the GCD of, finally from here, you could also imply that GCD of n and m minus n is also 1. And n and m plus n is also 1. So therefore, GCD of 2mn and m squared minus n squared is 1. So that produces, in fact, all primitive Pythagorean triples. One thing that I want to show is that this is, in fact, producing everything exactly once. Okay, so here is the proof of the uniqueness, meaning that everything is produced exactly once. Let's assume otherwise. Let's say you have two Pythagorean triples, 2mn, m squared minus n squared, m squared plus n squared, and 2rs, r squared minus s squared, r squared plus s squared with the conditions that we had with the condition that gcd of m and n is 1 gcd of r and s is 1 and 2 doesn't divide r plus s 2 doesn't divide m plus n i would like to show that these two are in fact the same how do we how do we show that and in fact we also know that m and n are positive integers and r and s are also positive integers so how do we show that? The way we show this is by looking at the sides of this triangle and noticing that the one that is odd is r squared minus s squared and m squared minus n squared. So note that since r squared minus s squared and m squared minus n squared are odd and the other ones are even 2mn 2rs are even we must have these two must be the same 2mn and 2rs must be the same and r squared minus s squared and m squared minus n squared must be the same so if you score both sides of the top one you get m squared n squared and divide by 2 is equal to r squared s squared and the bottom one gives you m squared minus n squared equals r squared minus s squared. So in other words, we have two pairs of numbers. One is m squared and negative n squared. And the other one is r squared and minus s squared. These two pairs, they have the same product and they also have the same sum. Therefore, they satisfy the same 
quadratic equation. So if you call this one um, A and call this one B, and if you consider this quadratic equation, Z squared minus BZ plus A equals zero, the roots are going to be, by Vieta's formula, the roots are going to be m squared and negative n squared and also r squared and negative s squared but quadratic equations do not have more than two roots so that means m squared must be r squared and negative n squared must be negative s squared which is to say m comma n must be the same as r comma s so in other words if you plug in different values of m and n satisfying those conditions you're not going to get the same triangle multiple times. Every triangle appears exactly once. If you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video, comment below, let me know what you are interested in and if you have any ideas for problems that you want me to work on feel free to put it in the comment section or email them to me and I will see you in another video.